Welcome back everybody, I now record in the Matrix white room. So today we're going to take a look at sub comments, right? So once somebody leaves a comment, you want to be able to leave a reply, right? So sub comments or replies will probably go with the replies naming for it. So again, uh, this will be a simple setup. And as we're going to be moving towards implementing users and stuff like that, that's when we will be enhancing the comment section and most of the other features that we have implemented. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and start. We're going to go ahead and open the comment object. And what I want to do is I want to just set up uh, the replies and uh, parent comment relationship. Okay. So a comment can have a parent. So let's go ahead and say that we can have a parent ID and that it will be a comment, right? So parent ID here. And uh, a parent can have many children. And in our case, uh, the children's are the replies. Okay. So let's go ahead, add another prop. Again, I list, you probably have already seen this. And here we'll say that these are replies. And let's not forget to initialize this as well. Okay, so there it is initialized. Another thing that I want to do is let's actually copy this. And in the previous episode where I said I didn't want to assign the moderation ID and stuff like that. Well, today uh, I do. So moderation item ID. Let's copy this, put this here and here. Let's get the namespace in here. And there we have it. So moderation item ID, parent ID, and the replies. So again, once we got the model ready, let's go ahead and move towards the controller level and fix some stuff there. So first of all, if you remember the problem that we had with circular relationships, once we got around to setting up these tricking relationships, like when we were returning data, uh, for deserialization. So I just don't want to go ahead and hit that error again and waste time on uh, basically saying, oh, this is the error that you're going to hit. And uh, this is uh, the, uh, this is how you fix it. Right? So what we're going to do is we're just going to implement the controller and then we're going to go straight ahead and implement the view models for our comments. Okay. In a similar fashion that we did it for our, uh, trick view models, right? So first of all, let's go ahead into the moderation item controller and we will fix up this part. Okay. So when we get the comments, let's go ahead and go straight to the comments. We will not include any, anything for the ID instead of uh, the ID that was meant to be on the moderation item here. Uh, this will be actually a moderation item ID. The select can be removed and first on our default because first or default before selected that particular moderation item and then the select of the nested comments essentially generated the list for our comments. So here we just want to, to list our comments. Okay. And these should, this should return, return all the comments for our moderation item. Another important thing actually is to say that this can be a nullable type, right? So what this means when we say integer nullable, that means that the ID doesn't have to be present. Okay. This is essentially saying that the comment doesn't need a moderation item ID to exist. And here we're saying that the comment doesn't need a parent item to exist. Okay. Because some comments are replies to other comments and some comments are actual comments on the moderation item ID. And if we're going to have comments for submissions, that's when we're going to add another property that says, right, these comments can be for a particular submission. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and add a controller. So class comments controller, and let's actually say comment controller. Let's bring this in. We will inherit from controller base. Uh, again, we will just bring in our DB context stuff and our routes just there and make sure that we rename this to comments. Okay. Uh, grab the class name and make sure that we name the construct constructor properly. And here in the comments controller, specifically what I want to do is I want to be able to create comments or rather replies for a comment and be able to grab those replies for a particular comment. So let's go ahead and get a, 
uh, make a get first where we are going to supply the ID of a comment and for that comment we want to get all the replies right so public enumerable comment get replies int id is what we're passing and then in the content in the context we want to go to the comments and we want to say where x uh, parent id right so uh, again this just makes it a little bit easier to grab it as well because now that we're including the ids uh let's go ahead and format this and uh, i mean that's pretty much it you can put it on one line again uh, you know you are the painter you choose how you lay your code out okay uh, next thing, let's go ahead and make the post. So this is where we're going to be creating the reply. So let's go ahead and say that again, we're going to be creating this for an ID and we're posting this, right? So again, a reminder, if we want to create something, we post it. If we want to update something, we put it, okay? So here we are going to be returning a comment and we are going to create a reply or rather we can just say reply because replying is the act of creating a comment that is a reply, right? So we can just say reply and that makes sense. So again, we pass the ID, which is the ID of the parent comment. And then similar to how we do it for our moderation item, we just want to include the comment here. And for the moderation item, well, not for for the comment. What I want to do is I essentially just want to grab around this much where we do the stuff with the comment. And this comment, let's actually go ahead and rename it to a reply. And the actual comment that we are going to get is from the context here. So comments, first or default, and we will get where the ID equals ID, right? And uh, let's uh, bring the regex in here. We will then on the comment replies, let's go ahead and add oh, the reply, All right? So we got the reply there and now save changes async. So this will, here we will essentially need to do or rather make this an asynchronous task. Uh, let's go ahead and await on this. Let's move a little bit down here and then we want to return OK with the reply itself. OK, and because uh, the reason that I'm actually putting I action result here is because of what I want to do and I want to do the same for the moderation item ID is if uh, the comment is null, uh, what I want to do is I want to return no content, right? So. The comment doesn't exist, we cannot create it. So let's go ahead and implement the same check here. Uh, let's say if um, mod item is null, return no content, okay? So uh, you can see there is particularly quite a bit of uh, repetition here. So uh, this is the part which makes me think a special service for comments, right? So. This is something that I'm again, I'm going to think a little bit about. And once I get around to implementing it, this is where you're going to hear my thought pattern behind it and why we put stuff where we're going to put it. So this is the part where as well, I might be thinking a little bit like, do we need mediator? Uh, do we need to move everything towards mediator or just the comments part will be all right. Okay. So this is the kind of stuff that I'm thinking, how do I, get rid of this duplication, a, sing, a, a simple service or just a static function. Is that going to be enough? Uh, all right, we've got to see. So uh, we are comments and again, just the error with the circular references when we're going to serialize back to JSON when we're returning here because of the uh, new relationships that we have added here. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and look this in the UI to run into this issue. I'm just going to go ahead and fix the error. Okay. So what we're going to do is let's go into here and let's create a comments or comments uh, view model. And what we're going to do is we are going to open the trick view model as well. We're going to copy this thing and actually copy this thing. Delete all this. And this is just to get a little bit of a frame, right? So uh, we know where we're just replacing some stuff. 
Uh, let's go ahead and put the comment in here. We will change the trick to comments. So I press F2 to rename there. All these, all this prerequisite stuff don't really need it. The ID can stay. Uh, we want to get a parent ID in case it's a reply. We want to get the content in case we're editing the comment, right? So we don't want to edit the HTML content when if we're editing a comment. We want to be editing uh, the actual content that is saved there, okay? And again, uh, I'm having a different idea about HTML content. So chances are this HTML content, the way we handle it is going to change, okay? But for now, it stays. It's a very easy and nifty way to display tagged users, right? It, it, it is a way, but I don't think it's perfect. So uh, let's also add a static uh, funk of... Um, what's it called this thing in here uh, grabbed a little bit too much and we will say create right so we are going to be creating where uh, we all right we have the default and we just compile right so uh, at this point all, all i want to do is i just want to so i don't have to do the same thing that we did in the tricking controller here where we compile the function here and it looks a little bit messy. Uh, what I want to do is actually have the uh, function compiled here in the static class and uh, that will be the end of it. So let's also so make this static, uh, remove a link and for default, uh, let's actually call it projection. So the reason I'm calling it projection because this is what the concept of uh, this is. We have one thing and we are projecting it into something else, right? So it's it's this transfer going going from a to b like a function takes you from a to b we're projecting mapping uh you can call this uh, in, in that sort of category of names like it's projection or mapping and stuff like that so uh the thing that we just did here the create and projection let's go ahead and also bring this concept here so i'm just gonna go ahead copy this put it here uh replace the comment with the trick and grab the projection here so i don't want to just paste it i actually want to rename it so all the references elsewhere are going to be changed as well okay so we are going to be following similar pattern between all of our view models and the way that they're going to be converted okay so uh, let's quickly go into the tricks controller and what we'll do is we will see where all these projections are used so for me, I have a bind of Alt L and U, so that will be locate usages. Uh, again, you can right click and you can find usages, right? And what this will do is it will show you, right, where are you using this? And in here, in the menu down here, you can essentially see where the projection is being used, right? So we can see here uh, the two parts where the projection is being used. So that's not what we're concerned with. Uh, the part that we are concerned with is where we're actually using the compile, right? So instead of this invoke, all we want to do is just call create, pass trick in here, and delete the rest, okay? So that becomes really simple. And then the other bit here as well, let's go ahead and just call create, and that's it. And now you can see these two parts are gone. The other bit is just where we compile the projection uh, it's screaming at us make this read only man Which, you know no not a big problem we can do that let's go ahead drop that down so we fixed all the basically we, we refactored a little bit right so it wasn't that big of a problem but it's nice to have consistency let's make this read only because we know that's going to be screaming at us later and we don't actually we never want to actually change this function now uh, coming back to where we were, uh, the reason we're actually doing this, if you still remember, that's because we're going to get the cyclical reference when writing the response. So the JSON serializer will not be able to serialize this because it's going to go into comment, it's going to see the moderation item on there, and it's going to see the comment inside the moderation item because we have all the comments here, and it's just going to keep going, going, and going until it breaks, right? So this is where, uh, let's go ahead and close some of these things in the comments controller and actually the moderation controller as well because here's where we're returning the comment. So let's go for the moderation controller first. Uh, where we get the comments, uh, let's go ahead and select and comments uh, view model and we want to just grab the projection. 
Right, and the thing that we're returning now is actually an object, right? Uh, the next thing is here, the OK, let's again comment uh, view model, and uh, same as before, well, same as we did with the trick, we just want to call create on it. Uh, now that this is done, uh, let's go ahead and close this, and we're going to go to our comments controller. Uh, let's go ahead and select here, so comments uh, view model, and we will call projection, and again, this will have to change to object. And at the end here on the reply, again, comments uh, view model. Uh, yep. We'll call create. And awesome. Uh, so another thing, you can see how I have a single projection here, but for comments, we essentially have two concepts. One, that a comment might have replies, and another one, that it's a, an actual reply, right? So this is a part where we might want to be able to separate these projections or create multiple projections. Uh, so for example, something along the lines of this will have a parent ID and this will have uh, something like replies a new, uh, I don't know, object array or something like that. So all, it, all it's going to do is just create an empty array in the projections. But we don't want that, right? It's just to give you an idea that this is something that you can do if you're finding yourself not being able to reuse one projection for sort of, if you have a model and the way that you're displaying it, you have two different ways. So for example, if you have like authorized users, if you're just a regular user and you, and then you're an authorized user, you want to display it in two different ways or if a, a manager is looking at it, et, et cetera, right? So if you, if you need two different projections, make two different projection, projections, okay? So uh, in the comment controller, we are handling our reply here and the rest of the stuff. Again, we might bring this out into its own service, but let's not dwell on that too much. Uh, let's go ahead and start implementing this in our uh, front end. So where were we in pages, not category, moderation, uh, a lot of nested folders. So trick ID, uh, what do we want to do? First of all, we want to be able to reply. And again, I'm going to make this as simple as possible as I can first. And then as we're moving further and further, we are going to enhance uh, this uh, feature. Okay. So reply ID. So all we're going to do first is we're just going to select something to be replied to. And as kind of a debugging field, uh, let's go ahead and say V if reply ID is uh, more than two, more than zero. We will say replying, replying to, I think that's, it looks a little bit weird, but I think I spelled it correctly. And we'll just, uh, we'll just display the reply ID. Uh, now for all the comments, uh, let's go ahead and get a span in here because otherwise we won't be able to insert the button into here where we actually want to select this comment to be replying, to actually reply to it, right? So let's get the V button in here and we'll just say that we want to reply to this comment. And uh, yeah, I think after the HTML that will be fine, so. When we click on this uh, reply ID, let's go ahead and set it to the CID, okay? And we can also put a little V button here for clear, where on the click, we'll say reply ID is zero, right? So we can select a comment to reply to, or we can clear a comment. So it's essentially ca canceling the process, okay? And then we want to sense, right? So depending on if we have a reply ID or not, we either want to create a reply or we want to create an actual comment. So uh, let's go ahead and check this. So when we uh, send, let's go ahead and say, if this uh, reply ID uh, more than zero, that's when we want to do the reply. Otherwise do the same thing that we're doing now. Uh, Format this a little bit. Let's also copy this, put it up here. There we go. So the reply, where is it going to be flying? It's going to be flying to comments for the comment ID, this reply ID and replies, right? 
So again, we can always check the URL here, API comments, uh, ID and replies. Okay, so that's where we're posting it. The next hard thing that we have is how do we assign this comment, right? So there are a couple of uh, caveats here and j that's just because of how JavaScript handles a race of view is unable to keep the reactivity to 100%. So I'm just gonna point some uh, a, a few places where there is, it's pivotal that where we can lose reactivity and you have to do a special case in order to not lose reactivity, okay? So uh, for the comments where we have here, because after I create a reply, I want to push the reply into one of my comments. So we have the ID from the comments. What we're going to do is we're going to select a particular comment that we're replying to, okay? So again, we can just use find and in here we'll say x id equals equals this reply id okay uh, let's drop this to a new line and then here we'll say replies and we'll say push okay and let's just make sure that it is super equals okay so we get our particular comment and in the replies we push it so let's go ahead and flatten this out uh, looks a little bit horrible but I guess there is no way around it. So one thing here is that the replies object doesn't actually exist on this comment. So this is where I was saying in the comments view model for the parent object, what we can do is we can seed an empty array just so we can do this assignment in the in our front end. Uh, the other thing we can do is before we assign uh, the the list of comments that is returned for this moderation, we can actually map this. So for all the comments, let's go ahead and extract these into a new object, okay? And this object, we're just gonna grab all the properties that the original comment had, right? So let's name this C, maybe we'll be a little bit more clear, but that, that this C means one individual comment from the response, okay? So grab all the properties of the comment from the response and just we're at this point all this means is something along the lines of this right we're just equating to the same object at this point point but now we want to add a property so this is how you would do this sort of functionality in javascript where you have an object and you want to just add a particular property to this object we can say replies and an array right so at the end, we will end up with the comment, but in addition, it's just going to have an empty array of replies. And this is only happening on the comments that are returned for the moderation as well, uh, for the moderation itself. So only the parent comments are going to have the replies array. So now this is valid code because the all the comments in here are the comments themselves, but with an addition of the replies array. Okay, so this should work for now. Let's go ahead, I'll save that. Let's go to moderation, forwards roll. I'm gonna open up the console to make sure that we are not having too much errors. And let's say test. So we got that, let's reply. So we're saying we're replying to. Uh, let's actually move that up a little bit because uh, I don't know why it's just a little bit weird that it's down there and we can clear. Okay, so we're replying to and let's say one. We will send this and uh, cannot read property push of undefined. So obviously messed up somewhere. So we're trying to push here. And for some reason, it's not so we're going to use our trusty view app or, or view plugin to essentially inspect of what, what is going on. So let's go into next into our particular page into the comments. And we don't have the actual replies on here. So uh, this is part of the problem that you can get here. So the comment that we actually passed into here is sort of suffering from the same problem where there are no real replies on the first comment that got returned from here. So this is something that, again, we can go ahead and take it take out so let's go ahead cut this from here we're gonna say const 
comment with replies equals this function okay and looks like i forgot one bracket so this is something that i will need to delete but now i can take this function i can actually call this comment as well to make this a little bit easier so we're expanding the comment properties here and adding the reply so comment with the replies and where we have the first map so delete the first parentheses that messed up and then we will map to comment with replies and the next thing that we are where we are pushing the comment itself here let's say comment with replies and we put the comment itself in here so that's what we're going to push okay so let's go ahead come back here so when we refresh this the first loaded comments uh, right here should actually have the replies array empty okay so what we want to do is we just want to test to send and the second object that we should get uh, should have the re empty replies array as well okay so uh, now how about creating a reply itself um, let's go ahead and actually before sending that I realized we're not displaying any other replies so let's make a quick div and v4 r in c replies right and we're gonna do the same thing just have the html content of the reply in here cool so save that hopefully let's just refresh for good measure and then we'll reply we're replying to one and let's go ahead and say one two three send and there is the reply let's just set, uh, set this to five refresh cool so just to double check we can go on here and see that these replies are indeed in this array all right and these are the replies and we have the parent id of one if we reply to three let's go ahead send this and there it is so if we check the second item on the replies parent id will be three right so on the back end the ids are being mapped correctly so this means that we can now fetch them so uh, at this point what we want to do is we actually want to be able to load these replies as well okay uh, let's before now this is you know this is rough development but for now let's just make these small and we'll ro load replies right so we're just gonna have small buttons here and you know you gotta stay classy let's go ahead and add uh, margin y1 so you know we get a little bit of space here on our comments uh, now every time we click on this we want to be able to load our replies so let's go ahead say load replies and in here we will pass uh, the comment itself to where we want to load replies let's go ahead copy the name go to the methods and we will create these replies and we will pass the comment in here so the comment will contain the ID and all the essentials that we will need to grab the replies, okay? So we'll grab this because it's pretty much the same URL that, we're, that we need, right? But for now, what now we will call get uh, instead of this reply ID, we're doing comment.id because that's the parent comment. Don't forget that we're passing C in here. So we're loading replies for the main comment and that's going to load this. We don't need to be passing any data into here, right? And nothing in the body. And what we're going to be getting back are comments. So we're going to be getting a bunch of comments back. Uh, let's go ahead, erase this part. And this is that pivotal point where we might lose reactivity. So if you do something like uh this so we grab common replies uh equals comments so the assignment of arrays so if uh, uh javascript is, is watching array a and you're just assigning array b to array a this is where you might lose reactivity in the sense that if you start editing items in the array that's when it might get messed up and it won't, it won't actually model bind it so this is what we want to do uh, we want to use convenient functions that view provides to us so we have to use the dollar set we say what do we want to set 
what property do we want to set and what do we want to set it to okay uh, pretty much the same way that you would write it in terms of the navigational properties and stuff like that so you know comment dot replies equals comments but now you're just putting them in the same order in the the set function so uh, not too complicated but if you are going to be overriding arrays make sure that you do it this way i'll leave a link in the description that goes over this topic okay so uh, let's save that let's go here and let's go ahead and load our replies and there it is so one one two three uh, let's just quickly take a look at it and yeah I, I can't remember one but i think yeah we did create it didn't we load replies here as well and i mean same thing so this will be it for this episode more or less simple comment section with the ability to reply to comments and again we are definitely not leave leaving it in this state we are going to be pimping it out so don't worry but for now thanks for watching if you enjoyed the episode as always please leave a like and subscribe if you're new i also stream on wednesdays and sundays on twitch link is in the description as well as my discord channel come join come say hi and i'll see you in my other episodes